So this was removed from the foot as a rule out melanoma or nevus versus melanoma black spots. And this is a great case because this is a, a scary thing clinically that is benign and easy to recognize once you find it and know about it. And the key, what is this, Kayla? Talon Noir, yeah. The black heel or black claw, right? Um, this is traumatic hemorrhage into the stratum corneum. Sometimes from, you know, I've, you stubbed your foot or I've heard of it happening in people playing basketball and running and sprinting and then stopping and turning back to the side of the court and it, that sheer force causing some bleeding. But in any case, it's basically what lay folks would call a blood blister, right? It's blood that is accumulated in the stratum corneum. It's clearly red blood microscopically. I will say sometimes it's degenerated like this. The red cells are broken down and there's serum here. So it's not as easy to see that they're actual red cells, but there is a pocket with serum and stuff in it and a couple maybe inflammatory cells from the circulating blood that got trapped in there. And that clinically, even though it's red to us, it can look very dark and, and black to the naked eye, um, but is actually not black microscopically. So always look for that, uh, particularly on acral skin, especially on the foot. Um, uh, when you're when there's a concern for melanocytic lesion, if you don't see any any melanin pigment down here, look in the stratum corneum. And then also, the, because this happens sometimes, that they're looking for a pigmented lesion and we don't see anything. So I look for talon noir. I look for pigmented fungus up here, like you would see in tinea nigra, which is quite rare in my practice settings, but is a, is a type of black mold that grows in the stratum corneum. It can mimic melanoma clinically. And then also we cut deeper levels looking for a melanin or melanocytes here in the dermis. Also, I've uh, rarely seen times where pigmented lesions clinically were actually due to exogenous pigment on the surface. Sometimes it's hard to tell because like here we've got ink, uh, surgical ink that got on the surface, but I've seen times where silver nitrate got onto the surface and had like black particles and that that actually happened clinically and they didn't realize it. I've seen times where people got had contact, I think with walnut trees, or wa or walnut, the outside of walnut shells and got black on their hands. So those are all different things that can sometimes cause pigmentation clinically. Uh, anyway, I don't know. Here's an expanded differential for you. Um, uh, acral pigmented lesions can be hard, but I love when we find these because it's benign and easy to diagnose and we're done. Uh, one thing I would also point out though is you don't, don't do an iron stain. You're not going to have hemosiderin here because this hemosiderin is due to blood breakdown and processing in the body. And this is now out of the body, right? Past the epidermis, past the, the basement membrane. So this blood here is just going to sit there. It might break down, but it's not going to turn into hemosiderin. So an iron stain uh, Gamori's iron is not going to stain this. And then note also that you can see this same process under the nail. Subungual hemorrhage can mimic melanoma. And so it's it's like just like Talon Noir under the nail. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you're looking for a pigmented lesion in the nail. And sometimes it doesn't make a nice pocket. It looks more like this. And you might have a little perikeratosis, like that may have been like there was when the trauma occurred and then it grew and got pushed up and the patient, by the time they came in for a biopsy, it's been a few weeks and the, the blood and the perikeratosis have lifted. And now you have new normal keratin underneath because the epidermis has healed and gone back to, to normal. So even this right here would be good for Talon Noir. And I usually do add a comment that if there's a persistent pigmented lesion there after the biopsy heals, uh, to go back and biopsy again, because it's possible someone could have bleeding overlying a melanocytic lesion. So, you know, I think that's always good to keep in mind that, that this should go away after they do the biopsy and it heals. There should be no more pigmented spot there. If there's still pigment, then that, that means that maybe they could have two things. Go do another biopsy if you're concerned.